Today, let's talk about how to properly share your screen in Microsoft Teams. Now, this is really important because what you see is not what others see. Now, you might be thinking, what's the big deal if I share my desktop, everyone can see everything. But no, they might not be able to see anything because everything is so small on their little laptop. It's big for you, it's invisible for them. Even if you share a specific window, some parts of the application can remain invisible to your audience. You'll think everyone is seeing what you're seeing, but they're not. I'll show you an example of that. Now, it's also important to know the difference between sharing desktop and windows and how you can adjust your screen resolution so everything is readable no matter what device your audience is using. Because at the end of the day, you want them to remember what you discussed. To demonstrate the difference, I'm going to be the presenter in the meeting and I'm going to use a big monitor like this. On the other side, I have a team member from Excel Plus and they'll be working from home with their laptop. Let's see how things look from both sides and how I can adjust my settings for the perfect sharing experience. Okay, so I'm using a workstation with a large monitor and I've logged into my Teams account. I want to start a meeting in the monthly reporting task channel in the finance team. So let's go ahead and start the meeting in the channel right away. Let's mute my audio and join now. This meeting is going to be visible to everyone in the channel. So anyone who has access to the channel can join the meeting. Now the meeting has started. Now if I take you to the view of the Excel Plus employee, who's using the laptop, this is what they can see. They can see that a meeting has started in training. This is their profile and they can join the meeting right away. So let's click on join so that they can join this meeting. Let's also mute their audio and join now. Okay, so from their side, they can see my profile picture. And if I switch to the big monitor from my side, I can see their profile picture. Okay, so now let's say I want to share some documents with them. We want to talk about some Word files, PowerPoint and Excel files. To share any documents, I can share content from here. I get the ability to share my desktop. This is going to show them everything that I can see. Another option you have is to share a specific window. So let's say you just want to share this project design document file. You can just select this and this is the only thing they can see. Now, how do you get things to populate inside windows? Well, you just have to first open them on your desktop. So here I've already opened the project design file. I can see it here. I've opened the Excel stock history file. I can see it here. If you open something and you don't immediately see it here, just toggle this off and on again and it should pick it up. You also have the ability to work on a whiteboard together or share PowerPoint in a different way by using this last option here. Now, what's the difference between using this option or using the window or desktop? Well, we're going to see that. Let's start off by taking a look at the desktop version of sharing. So when you share desktop, you get a red border around your screen. This is an indication that you're sharing everything that you can see with your audience. So let me bring up, for example, the project design file, which is in Word. This is how it looks for me. It's big enough for me to read. This is how I usually work. But from the view of someone using a laptop, so from the Excel Plus user view, this is what they can see it's really difficult to read because everything is so small. Now, on the other hand, if I take a look at this PowerPoint one, PowerPoint looks good on my side. It looks good on their side as well, because in PowerPoint, generally you are working with big text. So if you're talking about different slides here, it's easy for them to see everything, as long as you're not using very small text inside your PowerPoint presentation. Now let's take a look at Excel. Let's say I want to talk about this data and this file, this is what I see from my side, but on their side, this is what they see. It's very difficult to read the numbers because everything is so small. Now, even if I zoom in a bit more here, the grid gets slightly bigger, but it's difficult to see the ribbon. If you're talking about formulas and the formula bar, it can also be difficult to see those. So what you need to do if you're using a big monitor and you're sharing your desktop is to update your screen resolution. To do that, just go to your desktop, right mouse click, go to display settings, 
and adjust the scale and layout. So mine is currently set to 200%, which is actually larger than the recommended one, right? So this is how I prefer to work with 200%. If you have it on recommended, everything will be even smaller for your audience. Now I'm going to switch this to 300. You do get this notification that some apps won't respond to scaling until you close and reopen them. Well, in this case, I'm just going to leave them open and see what we get. So I'm going to bring back the Excel file here. Now it's a lot bigger on my side, but take a look at my audience as well. It's much easier for them to read this. What about Word? Let's take a look at that. It's much bigger for me, obviously. And for them, it's also a lot easier to read. Another useful tip I have for you is to use the Windows magnifier to zoom into a specific section. Just use the shortcut key Windows Plus. This is going to bring up the magnifier. If you click it again, it's going to zoom into that section. And when you move around, everything moves with you. Now, you don't want to overuse this because it can make you and your audience both seasick. To zoom out, use the shortcut key Windows minus. Now let's take a look at our other sharing options. So I'm going to stop sharing by clicking on this icon here and let's go and share a window. But actually, before I do that, I'm going to put back my screen resolution to what it was. So I'm going to right mouse click somewhere on the desktop, go to display settings and let's put this back to 200. So now let's go and share a window instead. So under share content, let's share the Excel window where I have the stock history. Let's see if we notice a difference now. Well, if this window is as big as my monitor, the effect is the same for my audience who's using a laptop, right? So take a look at this. They see everything small. But now take a look at this. I'm going to make my window smaller. So my Excel window, I'll just click on this to make it smaller. This is how it looks on my side. Now take a look at how it looks on the laptop view. It's much easier to read. So I haven't changed my display settings. Everything is the same as before, but if it's big, this is how it looks for them. When my window is small, this is how it looks for them, right? So everything becomes easier to read. The ribbon is better to read the formulas and the numbers. And the same applies to Word as well. But remember, now because I'm just sharing my Excel window, if I bring up Word, they can't see the Word application. So on my side, I see Word. I might be talking about this. I'm forgetting that I'm not sharing my desktop or sharing Word. I'm just sharing Excel. From their side, they can still see my Excel file. So what happens though if I collapse my Excel window? I get a notification here that sharing is paused on, until you return to the shared window from their side. They're still seeing the last view of my Excel file. Okay, so now I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to quickly show you the Word file and let's see how this looks. Okay, so this view has Word expanded, filling up the whole monitor. When I make it smaller from my side, so when I make the window smaller, take a look at how it looks like on the laptop. It's also a lot easier to read. Okay, so you don't have to worry about your display settings if you just adjust the windows like this. And that's if you're sharing windows and not your desktop. Now, is there any downside of sharing a window instead of desktop? Well, especially when it comes to sharing Excel applications as windows, your audience might not be able to see what you see. So let me show you. Let's go back to our Excel stock history. Now, let's say you are talking about this number, you want to format it. If I right mouse click and format cells, I'm going to get this format cells pop up here. Does my audience see that on the laptop? Yes, they see, and they can actually see it pretty well. But take a look at this. Not all dialog boxes are equal. If I go to conditional formatting and create a new rule, I can see this on my side. Take a look at what my audience sees. They don't see this box at all. This dialog box is completely missing for them. So they might have no idea what I'm talking about. Okay. So if you're working in Excel and you want all functionality to show up, you have to share Excel via desktop and not a window. 
Another thing that's missing, and that's really important if you're ever giving an Excel training, is that the help here, the formula help, is missing if you share it as a window. So if I'm talking about the filter function, I'm saying the first argument needs a raise, the second argument is this, I can see all of this, but what does my audience see? They don't see that at all, right? It's missing if you're sharing windows, but it's all there if you share this as desktop. I can quickly show it to you. If we go back and I share this as a desktop, and if I start to type in filter, you can see that the arguments are there. If I go to conditional formatting and I bring up the new rule, they can see that as well. Now, what about PowerPoint? Well, because you generally use large text on your slides, they can see it pretty well when you're sharing your desktop and they can also see it well when you're sharing your window, right? So this, I'm sharing my desktop here and this is how it looks for me. This is how it looks for my audience. Now, how about sharing a window instead? Let's stop sharing desktop and let's go ahead and share the window. Now notice the only window that you see here is this one, which is basically this that I have open in the background. If I share PowerPoint with them, they can see this view. It looks good from both sides, but obviously if you're presenting and you want to be in presentation mode directly, right? You don't want to come to this view and then switch to presentation mode. What you can do is to already have presentation mode open on your desktop. So I'm going to stop sharing here and run the slideshow here. So I have the slideshow active in the background. Now I'm going to switch to Teams and I'm going to share my screen. Now, because I have presentation mode active, I can see that. I can see the PowerPoint slideshow under window and I can see my default slide view here. So I'm going to go to the slideshow and start directly with that. Okay, so everything looks great on my side and it looks good on their side as well. Now, another cool feature here is that if you have any embedded videos and you play them on your side, your audience can see it as well, right? So it's being played on their side as well. If you want to share the system audio, you have to turn that on because they cannot hear the audio of the files that you're sharing. So if you just hover to the top, you get this dialog box popping up here and you have to click on this icon to include system audio. Okay, so this makes sure that they can hear what you're playing. Now, another cool thing of sharing windows is that you can use the PowerPoint inbuilt annotation tools that we get here. So for example, I want to, let's say, annotate something or bring attention to something. I'm just going to change the color of the pen and I'm going to start annotating my screen. How does it look to my audience? Let's take a look at the laptop view. This is what they can see. As I'm annotating, they can see everything. This is an advantage of sharing PowerPoint as a window. They can see inbuilt media and they can see any annotations that you're making. So I'm just going to go and stop sharing here. Another thing to mention at this point is that if you ever want to include the system audio beforehand, you can activate it from here and then go and share any web page or any videos or any audio files and they can hear the audio. Okay, so now let's take a look at sharing PowerPoint in this way. So if I shared the same PowerPoint presentation that we had, I can select it from this view. Now, if you don't see your presentation here, you can browse for it. You can upload it from your computer or from your OneDrive. So I've already uploaded it from my computer. It's this one, so I'm just going to select it. Now, what happens is that this presentation is open directly within Teams. So you're not sharing a separate window. You're actually sharing this directly within Teams. This is how it looks for me and this is how it looks for my audience. By default, they actually have the ability to navigate forward if they want. They can see the total number of slides. They can go back if they want. But on your side, as the presenter, you have the ability to turn this option off. You can prevent participants from moving through the shared presentation on their own. You just have to click on this and then from their side, these arrows, they become deactivated and they can't move back and forth in your presentation. The advantage of this is that other presenters can take control 
and present as well, right? So it's very easy to collaborate and give group presentations this way. The disadvantage is that you lose that annotation options that we saw before when you're sharing windows. And also if you go to a slide that has media, like we saw before, if I play this on my side, it looks like it's playing for everyone as well, but take a look at what my audience sees, they don't see it played. Okay, so you have to keep this in mind if you're sharing media and you're presenting PowerPoint. Another thing to mention is that whenever you're sharing your screen and you have your camera activated, the audience can see your video small on the bottom side of the screen. Even if on your side you don't see yourself, the audience can see you. So keep that in mind whenever you're presenting or sharing your screen and your camera is still activated. To stop presenting the PowerPoint, just click on stop presenting. Okay, so this is how you can properly share your screen with your audience. Adjust your screen resolution if you're using a big monitor, adjust the size of your window if you're just sharing a window on a big monitor, and if you're presenting PowerPoint slides and you wanna have this nice professional interface, use the PowerPoint option when sharing. If you learned something new from this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're looking to learn new tips and tricks about products you use every day in the office, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.